everybody, this is Nia Fine. I'm here with a weekly astrological message. You know, they're doing some amazing work up there on Instagram. This is an amazing video filter, but I don't feel it's real. I want to give you the real me, the imperfect me, so here it is. So, this is the real me. You know, uh, Instagram is doing a wonderful, amazing job with its filters, but you know, I'd rather have the real the cracked, imperfect reel. They ha it holds something more beautiful and majestic to me than the made up. The made up that we long for all our lives. Even though from the moment we've stepped out of our mother's bosom, or actually carried out of our mother's bosom, we've never met that perfectness in our lives. But yet, we long for it all our lives. Nevertheless, as the poet says, El Cohen, the crack, that's where the light gets in. So let's keep it real. And we're going to talk about from, let's say, the 3rd of December until the 15th of December. Intense time in the sky. If you want to hear more about the very powerful solar eclipse, total solar eclipse happening in the 4th, 12 degree of Sagittarius, please refer to my previous video. We're going to talk about it a little bit. Um, so on the third, just, you know, the third and the fourth are majestic, beautiful, magical, but very intense days. Days of imprinting, days that, you know, whatever happens, the changes that happens throughout this space and time has a imprint on our lives for the, at least six months forward or well, let's say up to six months forward it is definitely a time that is a watershed moment for some people especially if you have planets on the 12th degree of mutable signs the fourth itself with its powerful eclipse is a wonderful day to have ceremonies it's a wonderful day to actually think about our philosophies and are they really driving us forward in a way that is updated to this new age and time we could feel that we have overdone things that we have overreached that uh, we, we took too much of a big bite not necessarily so much as individuals, but as human beings, that we have neglected to see the personal footprint that we live on this earth. This is definitely a time to update our philosophy and what drives us, the truth in which we see the world. It is a time to take up that personal responsibility because this eclipse in Sagittarius that of course talks about our philosophies, our mind frame, the ideology that drives us forward, the way we think, is working together with Mercury, the planet of cognition and intelligence and information and updated times. It's working with Saturn, sextiling it, it's squaring Neptune, Sextile to Saturn demands personal responsibility because of this updated information, because of the logical consequences presented. And of course, the square to Neptune could provide us with both a feeling that we are powerless against these greater cycles that are all upon us, and an understanding that even though we might feel powerless as we may, we are the drops that make the oceans. We are the ones who make up the currents. We are the ones who drive the shores away and shape them over time. We have a responsibility in that flood. Indeed, we are the generation chosen for it, not arbitrarily. So it's definitely a good time to 
make the changes that we want to make in our own personal lives, understanding our own personal footprint, making a giant footprint as we are the masses, the public, humanity. The fifth, ah, and I said it could provide us both with that feeling and a feeling that we need to take care of nature. Neptune is also about creation. It's also about nature. It's also about the world. And an understanding that right now we are challenged by the state of these things. And we need to rise up to that challenge. The fifth is a wonderful day in the sky and so is the sixth. There's a lot of energy in the sixth as we have an exact sex cycle between Mars, planet, male energy, and Pluto, its higher octave, the transformator. This is definitely a time to seek power within and not without. This is a time to understand that collaborations make us stronger, that we do not have to stand alone, but yet the support that we seek so earnestly needs to come first and foremost from within. We cannot rely on the outside to give it to us solely. The seventh Mercury planet of communication squares Neptune. And of course, this is something that we could feel throughout the week. It is at the most intense on the seventh. And this is definitely a time that misinformation and disinformation raise their ugly head. We could have, you know, different versions of the truth. We could feel that we're not sure again where this world is heading. Uncertainty, you know, slaps us with its scaly tail. But a time for inspiration, a time for reconnecting to the simplest. A time for taking less on our plate and knowing when to put the borders that keep us safe and healthy at place. Where these borders actually lie is an important factor of this time because on the 8th we have the exact square between, again, Mars, planet of male energy, and Jupiter, the great expander. Def and again, something we could feel throughout the week. And this is a time that people are acting radically and rashly and out of context and out of tact and too directly and you could say that emotional intelligence is lowered on a general level we all become more enthusiastic on a positive level and better able to actually transcend things that have stopped us in the past we have a lot of energy but we are prone to overdo things, to jump too high too soon, to go over the top and actually burn out before we could actually build something sustainable. So modesty, tactfulness, and not feeling omnipotent at this time is very important to actually squeeze the positive out of this alignment. Ah, the ninth <clears throat> interesting day, at least until, uh, interesting, I mean good, great for communication, interesting emotionally for opening up. But from the noon time onwards, Eastern European time, it becomes more intense emotionally and less suitable for intimate or emotional occurrences and, and situations. The tenth, good day to let in the new. The eleventh, so much happening in the sky in the 11th my goddess we have uh, first and foremost Venus and Pluto conjunct this is again something we feel throughout the week but this is a time of transformation a time of transformation with the relationship we have with ourselves our values our self-respect time of transformation with the relationships we have with others and a time of transformation with the relationship we have with money, assets, and value in our lives. So definitely a time of change. It could be a time that we change jobs or that we change a position within our job. Definitely a time that, you know, our relationships could change. We could change statuses. We could meet new people. We could leave people. And definitely a time of transformation regarding how we value ourselves. 
and Mercury planet of communication is sextiling Jupiter in the expander, a time of great thoughts, a time of expanding of horizons, a time of beautiful uh, um, verbality, or it could be very verbal, we can feel that it's easy for us to put our words out there and expand our reach. It's a good time for writers, it's a good time for people who plan ahead at this time, and it's a good time for signing deals and contracts. The 12th, <clears throat> the Sun is going to square Neptune exactly against something we can feel throughout the week, and this is more about this uncertainty, this is a fog of war, if you will. This is a time that we could both feel that we are puny, and you know, unable to really cope with these greater cycles upon us, and that we have a sort of quarrel, uh, a quarrel with goddess, saying, you know, I wasn't sure that life is going to be this way, you know, why is this this way? I wasn't ready for this, I feel too sensitive. It's a great time to connect with simplicity, it's a great time to connect with nature and goddess and spirituality and creativity and art. Um, and actually the 12th could be a good day to take things that are more work related ahead even though we could feel lethargic and a bit forgetful. The 13th, good day until noon time and from noon time be careful not becoming obsessive or total. And the 14th eases up from the evening time onwards, Eastern European time, the 15th intense time in the sky. And we're heading into one more square between Saturn and Uranus. Again, shaking the pivots of the Earth, the pillars of the Earth. And we're definitely heading into a Venus retrograde. We're deep in the shadow. And from the 19th, we're going to be in the retrograde itself. And we're going to talk more about it next time. I want to remind you that readings through Zoom or lessons are always there. If you want to contact me, every detail you need is at the end in the slide. Thank you for sharing this and commenting on this. May we all keep it real, live long, and prosper. Amen.